We use MOSFETs in every circuit. But have you ever thought what makes MOSFETs so common and what are its parameters which help us to select a suitable MOSFET for our application? Well, don't worry about it. We are going to check that right now. We use power MOSFETs in most of our circuits like SMPS and motor drivers etc. These power MOSFETs have high voltage and current capabilities and their switching frequency is very high. We'll see which parameters are important to select a MOSFET and for that we'll refer to a datasheet of the MOSFET. This is the BUK7Y3R5 series MOSFET from Nextperia. First we need to start with drain to source breakdown voltage. This rating is important in selecting MOSFETs. If the application voltage exceeds this voltage value, then it might result in the destruction of a MOSFET. We should choose MOSFETs with a VDS sufficiently higher than the voltage at which we'll be using it. This rating denotes that it can block this voltage without damaging itself when it is in off state. But it comes with conditions and dependencies. Let's see this datasheet. The breakdown voltage of this MOSFET is around 42.7 volts only when the junction temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, gate to source voltage should be 0 volts. Now what is gate to source voltage and junction temperature? The gate to source voltage is required to turn on a MOSFET. This signal allows the drain current to start flowing through the MOSFET. When we apply this gate voltage signal, it should be at least more than the threshold value. Only then the MOSFET will turn on. For this MOSFET, we need at least 3 volts to turn it on. This VGS depends upon the drain current which has to flow through MOSFET and the VDS. If we see this graph, which is known as transfer characteristics of a MOSFET, it shows the theoretical relation between drain current and VGS. Let's say our load is 50 amperes. For that, we need around 4.5 volts of VGS to turn on the MOSFET, provided the VDS is 12 volts. Again, it is the theoretical relation between VGS and drain current. We can give gate voltage in the range of minus 10 volts to 20 volts to this MOSFET. Next is the continuous drain current. It is the maximum continuous current which a MOSFET can carry when the MOSFET is turned on. This MOSFET can carry 120 amperes when we give 10 volts VGS but at the junction temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and 93 amperes if the junction temperature is up to 100 degrees Celsius. This drain current capability varies with the change in junction temperature and VGS. If we see the drain current versus junction temperature graph, when the junction temperature of the MOSFET increases, the current handling capacity of the MOSFET decreases exponentially and eventually it goes to zero at 175 degrees celsius even if we give the sufficient gate voltage. The next parameter is RDS on. It is the resistance between drain and source. This parameter plays a very important role in the MOSFET selection. It is the key parameter in calculating conduction losses and eventually rise in junction temperature of the MOSFET. This RDS on increases if the VDS of a MOSFET increases. That means if you take a different MOSFET with high VDS, let's say 150 volts, then its RDS on will definitely be higher than the MOSFET which has VDS of 40 volts. If you apply less VGS, still this RDS on increases for the same MOSFET. The MOSFET is a positive temperature coefficient device. So if the junction temperature of a MOSFET increases, the RDS on also increases. This is the formula to calculate the conduction loss of the MOSFET. Now you see why RDS on is so important. This is the RDS on for this MOSFET with the condition of VGS should be 10 volts, drain current should be only 25 amperes and the junction temperature of the MOSFET is 25 degrees Celsius. Now if we see the drain current versus RDS on graph, then we can see the RDS on and drain current are very dependent on VGS. If the VGS is less, 
and drain current carrying capacity is also low. But if the VGS is high up to 10 volts, then this guy can handle up to 200 ampere current and still theoretically its RDS on will be less than 5 milli ohms. Next coming up is drain leakage current. This is also a drain to source current when VGS is 0 volts. That means when the MOSFET is turned off. Even if we don't give any gate voltage signal to the MOSFET, still this fellow allows some small amount of current to flow through it. We can call it a leakage current. This leakage current should be as small as possible. For this MOSFET, it typically ranges from few 9 amperes to 500 microamperes with different VDS and junction temperature conditions. So this leakage current depends on the drain to source voltage and junction temperature. When the MOSFET is off and its junction temperature is rising, in that case the leakage current of the MOSFET increases. So its conduction loss increases which eventually dissipates more power. Next is the peak drain current. It is the maximum drain current which can flow through the MOSFET for only 10 microseconds or less. For the MOSFET which we are referring to, it is 526 amperes if the junction temperature is 25 degrees Celsius only. This current capacity changes with the change in pulse time and VDS. If the pulse duration is more, this peak drain current decreases. This graph is called as safe operating area of the MOSFET. It shows a MOSFET can work without exploding like a grenade. We can talk more about this later. Now we need to know the thermal characteristics of a MOSFET. This is the thermal resistance of the MOSFET from junction to case or we can call it as junction to mounting base. It denotes the capability of the MOSFET to conduct the excessive heat out of it. If we want to calculate the temperature rise in a MOSFET, then this formula is very helpful. Where this is the thermal resistance between junction to ambient, the PD is the power dissipation across MOSFET. This is the ambient temperature where our circuit or system is working. Well, the R theta J and R theta JC both are different quantities. But we cannot use R theta JC in our calculation. This R theta JC is given in this datasheet. But many MOSFET datasheets have R theta JA value. The power dissipation of the MOSFET is addition of different power losses which are conduction power loss, switching power loss, gate charge loss and dead time loss etc. We'll see about these losses in detail in coming videos. When we are using a MOSFET in the third quadrant operation or let's say there is an inductive load, then this body diode of the MOSFET comes really handy. Its forward voltage drop is actually the source to drain voltage of the MOSFET. Well, these are all important parameters of a MOSFET we need to consider while checking the datasheet. Next time we'll see how a MOSFET turns on or turns off with its waveforms. Till then, stay tuned. I've added all the reference on this topic in the description. I hope you got something from this. If you haven't, you can watch the video again. Still if you don't, you can ask your doubts in the comment box below. Hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe to my channel. And finally, thanks for watching.